Hello, welcome back to Taste My Platter. Today's video is very special, but before we go into the video, I want to give you a brief background of what we're going to discuss today. Do you know what a Trappist monastery is? Trappists are a member of the reformed branch of Roman Catholic Cistercians founded in France in 1662. The monks or the Trappists, they lead a very simple life, primarily dedicated to God, prayer, work and silence or meditation. The Trappists follow the rule of Saint Benedict and they believe there should be a strict balance between work and prayer. To generate income, most Trappist monasteries produce artisanal goods ranging from bread, cheese and the most famous is the Trappist beer. The first Trappist came to Canada in 1881 and the last Trappist church in Western Canada was up for sale in 2018. With this happening, Brother Alperic who had been making this cheese since he was 20 years old decided to bless two professional chefs, Mr. Dustin and his wife Rachel with a century-year-old Trappist technique. They have been running this business, Loaf & Honey, for the past four years. So let's listen to their story today. Hello Dustin, welcome to Taste My Platter. Uh, could you please explain about the business and you know how long you're doing it? And yeah, so I'm Justin. I'm uh, part of Loaf and Honey, so we've got our own little cheese plant. Um, I studied under Brother Albert, who was a Trappist monk, um, who was working in a monastery by Holland, Manitoba. Uh, he'd been making cheese for 65 years, so I went to go and I learned from him over the course of a year. And then we started our own little cheese plant. So we've been in business for three years. Now. Three years, yeah. right? And uh, how did you learn? So it's from the brother you learned it, or? So yeah, we learned. I learned from brother Albrecht. So we're we were both chefs, or so we were caterers and chefs and doing that. And we thought it would be cool to kind of learn to make cheese. Uh -huh. um, I've been using his food for lots of things. Okay. And then just the more we kind of listened to him and heard his story and, and his passion, okay. uh, and that like, if we didn't kind of do something, no one else was going to keep making this cheese. That's so we're right. like, okay, well, let's, let's uh, try to make a business and we'll try to do stuff. And <laughs> so that's kind of where it's been kind of a tough couple of years, but we're now just kind of hitting our stride and getting everything. And awesome. We've got like almost 200 wheels aging right now. So uh, Okay. Yeah. And um, so the for the cheese production, the milk is coming from the local farmers? Yeah, so it's coming okay. from one local farm mm -hmm. and then we get it in. Um, so we get right now we get it in on Tuesdays and then I'll make cheese Tuesday, Wednesday and Every second week, I'll make it on Thursday. Okay. So I'm either making twice or three times a week. Okay. So you have your own store? We don't have a store right now. Okay. We sell to other stores and retailers and everything else. And then we have a catering company, so we use it up at a bunch of different events. And we do like pop-up dinners and we'll do different things and use it up there. Okay. So uh, do you have any retail stores in Winnipeg? So in Winnipeg, we're at the Cheesemongers, Preserve Store, Black Market Provisions, uh, the Bothwell Store, Bella Baguette, um, La Grotta, uh -huh. I think that's it. Okay, and do you come to Farmer's Market as well? We were doing St. Norbert's okay. Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. um, with everything that's kind of happened in COVID, we've kind of, so right now we're just doing online sales at St. Norbert's. Okay. And then we'll see kind of how the summer goes, if we're going to go back or, or how we kind of play everything out. So, so when you have sale, uh, people have to come pick up or do you have delivery? Uh, we will, if people will order a wheel, we'll deliver a whole wheel after. If it's smaller than that, then we suggest to just buy from one of the retailers and everything okay. else. If people want to come, then they can kind of call ahead. We don't have a store on our farm yet. Okay. So if they want, you can call ahead and we can try to set something up for everything. Awesome. So you also mentioned you have catering, right? Is that Olive Tree is? Is that? That has been almost four years now. Almost yeah. four years. Yeah. And so we, we were both chefs. Or okay. in the industry for like 20 years. Awesome. And we just kind of, well, just, it's been four years. We went on our own and we kind of wanted to do our own thing. So we do different pop ups and private dinners and weddings and stuff like that. Okay. How is the business with the COVID going on? 
<laughs> no, <laughs> okay. I understand. We're definitely focusing a lot more on cheese. Awesome. Yeah, I wish you good luck with that. And um, for catering, uh, if there a standard menu, or they can um, you can they can customize it. We do. We don't really have a standard menu. We like to really customize menus for events. So we'll like find out. You know, what was a favorite dish that your mom made as a kid? Or did you mm -hmm. go on a trip and have something you really like? Or, yeah. you know, what, what's a dish that brings back memories? And then we'll do that for the events and stuff like that. Okay. We'll do, we were doing home dinners for like eight people is kind of the minimum. We do like a three or four course meal. Okay. Um, if, you know, we'll, and then we've done weddings of 150. Awesome. So we'll do that. And then, I mean, with now, you can't really do any of that stuff. <laughs> That's so right. we're hoping to get back to that kind of, you know, in okay. the future. So. Okay, awesome. What do you use? Okay. Um, milk goes in here, it gets filled up to about here. Okay. So we do 240 liters, and it gets us about 12 wheels of cheese. Okay. So we'll fit it in there, the whole process we get, and then the curd. So we've got these, this is our cheese cutter, okay. so once the curd is firm and the milk is set, we'll put this in and it'll cut the curds to the sizes that we want. Okay. And then we've got this tool here that we use to stir it. So okay. it's based on what they used to use was a tree branch. Okay. So they would take a tree branch with the other branches on, peel all the bark off. Uh -huh. And that's how they would stir, you know, hundreds of years ago before. So this is kind of a, a recreation, but in a stainless steel kind of cleaner, uh -huh. cleaner thing. So, <laughs> okay. Um, once we do that, uh -huh. then the cheeses kind of sit into here. Okay. That's like a mold? So this is the cheese mold. Okay. And then it'll go in here, we'll put this on top of there, mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of press, press down, okay. press it there, and that pushes out any excess way and gets it all set up. Okay. Okay, well that's kind of a okay. quick little nutshell of that. What kind of cheese are you making? So it is called... We can't call it a Trappist, we sell it as Golden Prairie, but it is a Trappist style cheese. So it okay. is an aged, hand washed uh, cheese. What we'll do is pull the wheel off mm -hmm. and then we'll use this. Okay. So this is our culture and our wash and we'll just rub mm -hmm. and kind of give them a nice sponge bath Okay. on both sides to make sure it's nice and even and then just back on there. Okay, so that is water there? So it's water, culture and some salt. So that's what kind of gives it these kind of colors. Okay. They give you and slide down here mm -hmm. so you can see how they start whiter. Mm -hmm. This is the one that we did with wine, so it's a little test batch that we're trying. Okay. But you can see the different colors as they age. That's right. So those ones at the one at the end is they're these, new. These are the newest new ones. ones. These are the ones we did last week. Okay. Yeah. So that as they get old, it's much. Um, yeah. So you'll see here, and then you're kind of getting this. And then here, so these ones are almost ready to come out. Okay. So these ones will start coming out in two weeks. Okay. Uh, so they're about five pounds, two kgs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've got to, every day we take them out and twist them. And, so yeah, good but, for the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a particular temperature to keep the cheese at? Uh, uh, yeah, so if you look, this is our little, so we keep it at 12 degrees and we keep the humidity at above 90 so it once it hits over 90 it says high so that's kind of where we're awesome yeah. 
So we can also flavor these. Uh, you showed me the wine one. Yes. Uh, what else you do? Like uh, what other flavors? So we did a beer one. We did one where we did a smoked paprika. Okay. So we smoked paprika and we did some oil, some canola oil, some cold pressed oil from Mel's Finest, uh -huh. another local company. So we made our own rub, uh -huh. and then we rub. So we've got kind of this nice dark radish color that goes into it. Gives it a nice, nice color. Nice yeah. color. Okay. Thanks. It is. These are the last wheels mm -hmm. from that cave. So we had another, that, that small fridge. Okay. And I couldn't control the environment as well. Okay. So now that we're into this new fridge, I can control the environment a lot better. Yeah. So these are the last wheels from that. Uh -huh. And I haven't, we haven't had any, any growth on any of the new wheels. So we're really happy having moved into this bigger facility. Okay. If you don't mind, how much does it, cost for one wheel? Uh, one wheel is, we charge uh, $50 a kg okay. for retail, Okay. Um, so it's about $100. So as it aged, does the, is that a price change? Not yet, because we haven't aged, now that we're in here, we'll start to age longer, so okay. we'll do some that are a year and everything else, but we're just, we're just getting into here, okay. but this, so eventually what we'll do is we'll have this filled in the top two rows will be ones that we age out, okay. so they'll age for a year. Because we only wash until about two months. Mm -hmm. So I'll move, once I don't have to wash them, you then they'll move, move up here and they'll just get flipped once a week. Okay, yeah. so when people request or when they want to buy, do they ask how aged it is? Not yet. No, not right yet. now, everything is coming out fresh in two months. Okay. So we're hoping in a little bit, then we'll have some stuff that'll be aged. Like it, so now it's a softer cheese. Once. It's aged, it's firmer, it takes on like a parm kind of texture, a little okay. crystally and stuff, yeah. Okay. So for, uh, do you have anyone helping you with this? Obviously your wife. <laughs> your <laughs> um, wife, a little bit, yeah. Yes. She's actually had to take another job because okay. of COVID and our, our catering wasn't busy enough. Yeah. So my mom does a lot of the day-to-day -day washing. Washing. So this is their farm. Uh -huh. So we've got our own place. So I come here three days and four days a week and make the cheese and then on the days off okay she'll do the like the day-to-day -day washing i see yeah okay. and this has to be done every day the washing the washing gets done every, every day. day yeah so it just saves me like it it saves coming for an hour okay his, his mom will do that and, and kind of everything else so. okay. and it lets me kind of focus on some other things so. i see if you like to contact love and honey i'll leave their website link on my description box below also please support them and also follow them on Instagram at Love and Honey. I personally tried this cheese and I really liked it. It has a very creamy texture and also very rich in flavor. I'll also share the recipe here. To cook the fettuccine, I'm boiling 2-3 to three cups of water with a teaspoon of salt. Once the water starts boiling, you can add the pasta and then cook it uncovered for 3 to 7 minutes and then drain and keep it aside. Now to make the cheese sauce, on a heavy bottom pan, I have taken 2-3 to three tablespoon of butter that is melting on a medium heat. This I have added 1-2 to two teaspoon of all-purpose flour. Keep stirring the mixture until you get a nutty flavor. Now to this I am going to add 2 cups of warm or room temperature milk. And to flavor we can add salt and black pepper or white pepper powder. While the base for our cheese sauce is cooking, I am going to shred the cheese from Love and Honey. I 
have added the cheese to the base and now I'm going to stir it continuously until all the cheese is melted. Stir it continuously until you get the preferred consistency. You can also flavor it with any kind of herbs you prefer. I have added salt to taste and also added some nutmeg. Now for the pork chops, I'm going to marinate this with very simple ingredients, salt, paprika and some palm vinegar. I'm going to keep this refrigerated for at least a half an hour. After half an hour, I'm going to cook this meat on an iron griddle for 1 to 2 minutes on both sides on medium heat and then leave it inside an oven which is preheated at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 14 to 15 minutes. plate this, I have served it with the cheese sauce and fettuccine pasta, garnished with olive oil, dried basil and red chili flakes, served with pork chops and more of our love and honey cheese. If you like this video please like comments share and subscribe thanks for watching taste the platter stay safe and stay tuned